Two Broke Girls and the Sick Horse, written by Greg Wade. Cold Open. Interior Williamsburg Diner Night. Max and Caroline tend to the few patrons scattered around the diner. Oleg sets down a hot plate in the food pickup area. Pick up sausage. This is mac and cheese. I know. Pick up my sausage. Han walks through the diner and grows through his iPad. I did it! You finally got a Twitter follower? I got date on new Asian dating site. Asian dating site. Are you sure it's not just a hotline support group for bad drivers? This site the real deal. It is called plentyofrice.com. I'm happy for you, Han. Can I see your profile? Oh, it is boring. Very standard profile. No need to look. Max snatches the iPad. <laughs> this is a picture of Jet Li. So what? You say we all look alike? <coughs> Besides, Jet and I have much in common. He is adorably diminutive. I am adorably diminutive. He is athletic. I was captain of Pee Wee Badminton team. He... He's a movie star. You look like the star from the movie E.T. Reading profile. I own one of New York City's finest restaurants. Too hot. Han, please, our soup du jour is cream of Oleg. I'll make yours extra creamy. Reading profile. I'm tired of playing the field, looking to settle down with a good girl. Too hot. Collecting <coughs> copies of Geisha Gazonga magazines does not count as playing the field. So I embellish a bit. Maybe you girls give me advice for a big date? You could start by being honest. Yeah, if I laid like this on my resume, I wouldn't have to work here. End of cold open. Act 1. Interior Max's bedroom, night. Max is asleep. Caroline storms into the room. Max, did you steal my shoes? No, no, I'm having that nightmare where the pale banshee accuses me of theft. Chestnut's loud maid bellows from outside. Then a unicorn maze, and the next thing I know, I'm on a space shuttle with my kindergarten teacher. I can't find my red light Vuitton clogs. I know you took them. You're the one who's always stealing my Bob Marley t-shirt. Only because I use it to clean the toilet. That's a lie! Our toilets have never been cleaned. I need my shoes to grow outside. Something's wrong with Chestnut. Chestnut maze again. Poor guy's probably just horny. Put on that horsehair coat of yours and bend over. Exterior, Max and Caroline's backyard. Minutes later. Caroline tiptoes outside in bare feet with Max in tow. This better be serious. The last person who woke me up this early lost their ability to reproduce. Chestnut neighs loudly, right in Max's face. Did you hear that? No. I must have missed it. I think he's sick. He's been neighing all night and hasn't pooped in days. How would you know? You never cleaned it up. Chestnut neighs again. See? He knows. There's definitely something wrong. I don't know what to do. My stable boys always took care of this stuff. You're lucky. All I ever meet are unstable boys. Every time Chestnut got sick, they just take him away for a few hours and bring him back totally cured. And sometimes a different color. How are we going to figure out what's wrong? I heard about this thing called the Google. Apparently, it's pretty good at finding out stuff. I'll make some calls. Maybe they'll let us use it for a while. Interior. Max and Caroline's apartment. Minutes later. Caroline serves the internet while Max makes coffee. Oh my god. Did you just get Rickrolled? I found a website for this vet, Dr. Hung. It says Chestnut's condition's really serious. Anyone can post stuff on the internet. My Wikipedia page says I'm the lost Olsen triplet. But the Dr. Hung is a horse specialist. Check out her slogan. Caroline turns the computer so Max can read the site. Hung likes horse? Apparently Chestnut has a bowel obstruction. Well, give him some horsey men useful and stand clear. Reading site. Equine bowel obstruction results from swallowing a large object. Maybe you'd be less stressed if you swallowed a large object. A loud pain may comes from the backyard. Max, listen to him. Has he eaten anything weird lately? Other than sugar cubes and grass clippings? Wait, remember how you said your shoes went missing? Yes. Why? I might have borrowed them to impress this really cute guy who works at the newsstand. Oh yeah? Did it work? Totally. He took me out for a hot fudge Sundays after a shift, and we really hit it off. Oh, well, that's great. But what does this have to do with Chestnut? I may have dropped my Sunday on your shoes and left them outside for Chestnut to clean. Wait, are you saying Chestnut ate my favorite red shoes? I'm saying they're going to be your favorite brown shoes. Max, how could you? Dr. Hung says if the obstruction isn't removed within a week, it can be fatal. I'm sorry. How do we remove it? 
Max hands a cup of coffee to Caroline, looks at the computer, reading site. There are two obstruction removal methods, surgery and... Ew. Well, at least my old bottle of lube will finally get to use. Exterior, Max and Caroline's backyard minutes later. Max and Caroline emerge from the apartment wearing makeshift hazmat suits, consisting of dishwashing gloves, rain boots, and garbage bags around their torsos, arms, and legs. How deep do you think those shoes are? Dr. Hemsight just says to keep going until you feel something hard. I guess chestnuts just like any other man. The girls move behind chestnut. Alright, chestnut, bite down on something. Always works for me. Go ahead, Max. Go ahead, Max. You're the one venturing into the black hole. Just kidding, darling. It's very pink and lovely. I'm not touching it. I dump guys when they ask for that. Then why did you put on the garbage bags? Hello, moral support. Why did you put them on? Hello, splash damage. He ate your shoes. You're the one who put them outside. But your arms are long and elegant, perfect for horse penetration. It's way more natural for you. I come from high society. You spend your life in dirty places. Just pretend you're cleaning out the garbage disposal. Oh wait, you've never done that either. Chestnut lets out his most pain name yet. Don't worry, Chestnut. We'll call that for you. Pets can't be that expensive, can they? How would I know? The only pet I ever had was a rat that lived in my mattress. His name was Tapeworm. Aw, that's kind of cute. Why'd you call him that? He gave me Tapeworm. Interior of Williamsburg Diner Night. Max cleans up the near-empty restroom. Juan approaches Earl. Earl, you've had much sex, correct? Well, I don't like to brag, but I did once have a threesome with two of the Supremes. I need advice for big dates. I want to create orgasmic love sex. You mm, love music. Do you play any instruments? I play ancient Korean wind instrument, chokte. Each note sounds like a swarm of angry hornets. Mm, that's more of a third date kind of thing. I can teach you a few notes on the saxophone. That would get her pants off quicker than a Kardashian marriage. Oleg approaches. Music is overrated. Show this little Hello Kitty how sexually wild you are. Show up to the date with velvet handcuffs and a pair of vibrating nipple clamps. Vibrating nipple clamp? Here, I'll show you. Oleg whips off his shirt and puffs out his chest displaying the chrome nipple clamps. Han reaches out and touches a clamp. It sends a vibration through his body. Max walks by with a bus chair. Max! Look! Han grabs onto Max. It sends a vibration through her and causes the dishes in her bus train to rattle. It's gay earthquake season. She shakes Han off and heads to a table. This clamping seems painful. He lets go of the clamp. Forget the clamps. Just play a sweet sax to him. Sax is just sex with an A. But if you really want to get some A, tell her to have a very large package. That much we can agree on. Caroline rushes to Max, interrupts her table busing. Max, I don't believe it. I know, it's always shocking when you see Oleg shirtless. I called Dr. Hunt's office. Chestnut's procedure cost $10,000. Don't panic yet. This is probably covered by Obamacare. How many cupcakes would we have to sell $10,000 in a week? Let's see. 10,000, carry the two equals, you're kidding me. Oleg approaches, still shirtless. Oh, girls! Put your shirt on before every restaurant in Brooklyn gets a health code violation. I can help you ladies make a fast cash. It would take way more than $10,000 for me to sleep with you. 20000 No. 100000 No. $1 million and I wear a Ryan Gosling mask. Deal. I'll start saving. But that's not it. My cousin J.Lo owns a phone sex business, Volvo Voices. He needs fresh new operators. What kind of losers still call phone sex hotlines? Socially inept Asians. Guilty. Elderly black men. Oh. And sexy Ukrainian cooks. Thanks, but I get my fill of dirty talk from the quadriplegic dude that yells at me from the corner. Uh, you should give Torso Terry a chance. Max heads towards the kitchen. Caroline stops her. Wait, Max. Chestnut really needs this procedure. And it's not like we're actually having sex with these guys. The girl who needs a list of references before holding hands with guy wants to be a phone ho? I volunteered at a crisis hotline for extra credit at Wharton. It's going to be that much different. There, they wanted to kill themselves before they talked to you. Now, they're going to want to kill themselves after. And you don't think I'd be good at it? You'd be the phone sex equivalent of Ambien. I'd be better than you. It's not like they can see your boobs over the phone. I'll settle this. 
I'm lying on your bed, naked and aroused. Tell me what you do. Wet myself. Vomit. Wow. You're both great. Here's Jello's card. He hands business cards to Max and Caroline. End of Act 1. Act 2. Interior, Jello's office. Day. Max and Caroline cautiously venture into the room, which is more like a large janitor's closet than an office. Jello is behind a card table with a phone to his ear. You tell him Russian bribes cost 20000 If he wants bargain basement deal, he'll have to go Polish. Look, I've got to go. Reese Witherpoon and Katie Pear of Jugs are here. You girls are prostitutes, yes? No, your cousin sent us? He said you need phone sex operators? Right, prostitutes are my three o'clock. So, you're Oleg's friends. More like his sexual harassment victims. We need to make $10,000 in six days to save our horse. I can relate. Parts of my body are like a horse. Just tell us it's impossible to make that much so we can leave. Well, Volvo Voices charges dollars, four dollars a minute, and you get half. If each of you works ten and a half hours a day, you'll make ten thousand dollars in four days. Wow. Why are we wasting our time on this cupcake crap? What exactly do we have to talk to these callers about? Uh, just the basic fantasies. Go-go and or teacher stuff, domination, superhero worship, flogging, crushing, amputee fetish, waterboarding, noseplay, humiliation, etc. Well, nice meeting you. Let's go, Reese Witherspoon. No, we have to do this. For Chestnut, I'd rather eat cream of Oleg. Well, that doesn't pay as much as this. Chestnut is the only thing that keeps me going in this garbage can of life. Please, Max. All right, fine. Just let me handle the humiliation calls. Humiliating you losers is what I do best. Thank you, Max. Caroline hugs Max. Max tries to push her away. Get off me. I'm going to be intimate with enough weirdos this week. Jello holds up two bedazzled Bluetooth earpieces. Best of all, you get these free Bluetooth headsets. Try them on. You think this is my first time a guy has stuck something in my ear? It always ends messy. Interior. Williamsburg Diner Night. The diner is bustling. Caroline, equipped with her Bluetooth earpieces, arrives at a table where two hipsters are seated. She puts a plate down in front of hipster number one. Here's your burger, and I'll be right back with your hot dog. She smiles at hipster number two, pats him on the shoulder, and heads to the food pickup area. Dude, I think she's into me. Caroline's phone rings. She answers it on her Bluetooth, picks up a hot dog plate. Caroline Chang speaking. I mean, this is Candy Starling. Are you hard? Oleg's head pops up behind the pickup window. Always! Caroline rolls her eyes, heads back to the hipsters. Max passes by on a Bluetooth call. Oh yeah, baby. I'll be your naughty birthday clown. Caroline sets the hot dog down in front of hipster number two. Two caller. So what do you like? Sexy? Wow, you're forward. I'd like some hot sauce, baby girl. Uh, oh, no, not... Uh, okay, I'll get some hot sauce for your hot dog. She rushes to the bar. Told you, bro. Caroline grabs a bottle of hot sauce, heads back to the hipsters. Two caller. Oh, nothing. I was just talking to. But you do want me to put hot sauce on your hot dog? I can put it on myself, but sure. No, no. Never mind. Two caller. Whatever you say, I'll cover the full length of your hot dog in drippy burning hot sauce. Hipster number two flashes a cocky smile at hipster number one. Caroline squirts hot sauce on the hot dog while listening to the caller. A disgusted look appearing on her face. Let's grab a drink after your shift. What did you... what? Caroline's disgust causes her to instinctively squeeze the hot sauce bottle. It sprays hipster number two's lap. Gross! I get it. We don't have to go out. Oh, I'm so sorry. Caroline grabs a bunch of napkins from the dispenser and frantically scrubs hipster number two's lap. Yeah, baby, you made a big, big mess. Why did you use some ketchup? Max, equipped with her earpiece, passes by Caroline on her way to Earl. Hey, Candy. You're supposed to use your words, not your hands. Earl, I need your help with this cuckold fantasy. Oh, for the full insight it's gig? Sure thing. Too my, my lover's right here. You useless loser. You just stand in the corner and be pathetic while your Roman rides you like this big black stallion. Wow, you're good. I used to do that all the time for John and Yoko. Max clears some plates from a table. Two collar. That's Earl. He satisfies me in ways you can never imagine possible. Caroline rushes over to Max. I can't handle pleasing customers and sex weirdos at the same time. You've got to stay strong if you want someone to stick their hands up your horse's butt. You 
want to do that? Caroline's phone rings. She answers it and walks away. This is Candy Starling. Please be gentle. Max walks past the couple on her way to the pickup area. Excuse me, can I substitute onion rings for fries? Sorry, no subs. No, wait. You, you can still be my sub. Don't hang up. Oh. Thanks. I just lost my most pathetic collar. Caroline passes Max. As a matter of fact, I do look like smart fat. Max's phone rings. She answers it on her Bluetooth, grabs two plates from the pickup area, and walks towards a table where two old ladies are seated. This is Maximiliana. What do you want? She arrives at the table, drops the plates in front of the ladies. I've got full lips, huge boobs, and a juicy ass. The old ladies gasp. What? Max walks to the bar and wipes it down. Sure. I love Asian guys. Size doesn't matter. Caroline passes by. Yes, Garvanel, your magic spell is making my smurf feet too huge. Sure, I can talk like Asian girl. What do you look like, Big Butt Troy? Max looks around suspiciously and walks towards the kitchen. Oh, you look like Big Asian movie star? Tell me more. Interior kitchen continues. Max looks around and heads towards the walk-in refrigerator. Oleg notices her. You powerful New York business owner? Mmm, me love you long time. Slow down, Sailor Moon. I'll be your Pikachu. So you, what do you want me to do to you, baby? Interior walk-in refrigerator continues. Max pokes her head through the door. Han is inside on his cell phone. He doesn't notice Max. I want you to karate chop my dirty spot. Max would sell her Bluetooth earpiece. How about I give you my kung fu grip? Oh, hello, Max. I was just having an important conference call with... I was practicing dirty talk for big date. Was it good for you? You were as charming as John Travolta on a massage table. Tell me how to please my date, Max. If you really want to please her, don't show up. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go back to degrading myself and having bone sex. Take off your pants. Let's get this over with. Music plays. Possibly nine to five by Dolly Parton or Talk That Talk by Rihanna. As montage begins, exterior, Max and Caroline's backyard day. Caroline talks in her Bluetooth while she brushes Chestnut. She reacts to something the caller says and covers Chestnut's ears as she responds. Interior, Max, homemade cupcakes day. Max talks in her Bluetooth while she squeegees the store windows. She is grossed out by something the caller says, takes her earpiece out and squeegees it. Interior, Max and Caroline's apartment night. A drowsy Caroline is on the couch talking on her Bluetooth while Sophie eats a cupcake next to her. Caroline falls asleep mid-sentence. Sophie takes Caroline's earpiece out, sticks it in her own ear, and happily chats with the caller. Interior, Williamsburg Diner night. Max talks on her Bluetooth while she clears the table. Han is behind her, nodding and taking notes on the dirty talk. Interior, Williamsburg Diner, night. Max and Caroline head toward each other, both grossed out by what they hear on their Bluetooth earpieces. They exchange earpieces as they cross paths. Interior, Williamsburg Diner, night. Max and Caroline talk on their Bluetooth earpiece as they serve food at the bar. Oleg appears behind them, turned on by what he hears. He reaches under his shirt and touches his vibrating nipple clamps. The vibrations reverberate through his arms. Interior, Max and Caroline's apartment day. End of montage. The music fades out. Max and Caroline are sprawled across Caroline's bed, exhausted. I feel dirty. I feel dirtier than your, than your shoes. But we still made $10,000. Jayla's coming by the diner tonight to pay us. Actually, we made 10050 I really hit it off with my last caller. I told him I was a black chick named Shaniqua. He's going to be really disappointed when we go on our gate. I'm so glad Chestnut's going to be okay. I never realized how soft this bed is. Oh yeah? You like the way that feels? I love the way it caresses my silky, silky skin. You just want it all up on you, huh? I want it touching all my sexy curves. Totally pleasing. Yeah, doesn't this bed make you feel like a total slut? Max and Caroline look at each other. Oh my god, we're total phone hoes. You're good at it. So are you. Disturbing and good. Interior Williamsburg diner tight. A few patrons are sprinkled throughout the restaurant. Max clears the table. Caroline approaches her. Dr. Ham's office said there's a month-long wait list for appointments, but luckily the receptionist isn't immune to trumps and candy, darling. So, Dr. Ham's coming by tomorrow night. 
great. So you can go back to not cleaning up the horse poop. Han enters, wearing tight leather pants, a crotch that has been obviously naturally enlarged. Hey, Han Holmes. What on earth is that? Ladies, my eyes are up here. Oleg and Earl told me large package would impress Gate tomorrow. Looks like they were right. Are you smuggling a chihuahua down there? Nope. Just fresh cucumber. It looks horrible. I knew it. Cucumber not big enough. Han rushes to the kitchen as Oleg approaches the girls. Bad news, girls. Jello was just arrested for importing faulty Polish brides. What does that mean? It means the biggest syphilis outbreak since my trip to Porn Valley. She means, are we getting paid or not? Uh, of course not. Jello needs the money for a hotshot lawyer. This guy is Johnny Cochran of STVs. Oleg heads towards the kitchen. We can't pay the vet? What are we going to do? <laughs> is there such thing as a drawing plan? End of Act 2. Act 3. Interior Williamsburg Diner at night. The diner is almost empty. Max wipes down the bar while Caroline sets a plate of cupcakes on a table that is uncharacteristically well set with a bouquet of convenience store flowers. She struggles to fold the cloth napkin. Max, come here. If I fold the napkin for you, you'll never learn how to do it yourself. I chose cupcakes for Dr. Hum that represent different aspects of, Chestnut, of Chestnut's personality. Classic red velvet for his velvety smooth charm, devil's food for his devilish sense of humor, and a double chocolate because he's twice as sweet as other horses. You forgot coconut cream because you're cocoa nuts. We have no money. A few cupcakes aren't going to convince the vet to cure chestnut for free. Well, we have to try something. Dr. Hum will be here in a minute. Claude approaches. He is wearing a gaudy shirt and has an even larger cucumber in his case. Speaking of hum, does cucumber look natural? A baby carrot would be more realistic. Just want to make sure you give best service to me and date tonight. And feel free to drop hints I have pleased you sexually. Actually, I'm allergic to cucumber. Han approaches Earl, who is polishing his sax. Oh, have you chosen perfect song to make date legs spread like margarine? Well, jug of fever, fever always worked for me. Or for you, let's try a bad romance. Oleg delivers a bag of sex toys to Han. Han pulls a whip out of the bag. This, will, this stuff will seal the deal. No girl can resist these pleasure providers. Thank you, friends. I think this may finally happen for me. Oleg and Earl watch Han as he takes the bag to a booth and displays the sex toys on the table. You think he's going to get some? He'd have a better chance of winning the slam dunk contest. Dr. Han <coughs> enters. Caroline spots her. There's the vet. Don't be offensive. That's like telling you not to be blonde. Dr. Hung, I'm Caroline Channing. My secretary sends kisses. Where is horse? I had to reschedule a mule circumcision for this. He's at home. I thought it would be best to talk here. This is my friend Max. Are you sure you're a vet? I could have sworn you were a model. Save the bull crap. I get enough of that at work. Vets deal with lots of nonsense? No. Actual crap from bull. And dribble, and lizard, and turtle. Believe it or not, turtle crap is worst. Max, Carolyn, and Dr. Hung sit down at the table. On that note, we have some delicious cupcakes for you. Turtle crap free. Han runs over to Earl and Oleg, cell phone and phone. I just got text from Gate. I meet her out front now. Earl, sax up that sax. Earl grabs his sax. Oleg, carpet please. Oleg rolls out a red carpet. Han adjusts his cucumber. Time to get... Hans on. He scurries out the door. This is more hopeless than what I when I led the Jimi Hendrix intervention. Dr. Hong takes a bite of cupcake. Mmm, double chocolate. Very, very good. But I thought this meeting about horse anus. The thing is, we can't pay you for Chestnut's procedure. Why not? Syphilis. It's a long story. But our horse means the world to us. Is there any way you could do this pro bono? We'll do anything. Even shovel your turtle crap. If horse sick as you say, this very costly procedure. I cannot do for free. Han trudges in. The cucumber is no longer in his pants. He holds it in his hand. Where's your girl? She hugged me. I, I, I got so excited, cucumber popped out of pants. I know the feeling. She called me weird and ran away. I will never find love. Earl plays sad trombone riff on his sax. I am sorry, girls. Best of luck. Please, we spent the week corrupting our ear holes for this. 
Dr. Hung takes a step toward the door, but stops short when she sees Earl and Oleg consoling her. She turns back to the girls. Who is that handsome man? That's Earl. You really do like the chocolate, huh? Not urban men. Other one. Uh, Oleg? Stay away from him. Those stains on his apron aren't what you think they are. No, not greasy chef. Huh? He's the Korean version of the Game of Thrones dwarf. Heroin elbows Max. Uh, he owns this place. He's the greatest boss. Uber charming and very cute. He looked like a young Jet Li. Totally. He's got a huge package. I would love to meet him. But he would not like me. I'm so shy. Only time I see package is when I'm about to neuter it. Of course he'd like you. You're a successful, attractive, warm-hearted woman. We could introduce you to him and put in good work. Really? That would make me happier than uncircumcised mule. Caroline rushes over to Han. Han, I need you. Not now, Caroline. Heart is broken. I just lost only girl who ever liked my Pinterest posts. Well, I've got someone else who might be interested. See that girl? Caroline gestures to Dr. Hum, who folks awkwardly. She is beautiful, like looking in female mirror. She's a vet. We need her to treat Chestnut for free. I'll introduce you if you help us convince her. When I'm done with that little bitty, she'll agree to be Chestnut's wet nurse. Caroline leads Han to Dr. Hum. Han, I mean, your grace. We'd like you to meet Dr. Hum. She's a really cool chick. Well, hello, Dr. Hung. Aren't you bee's knees? <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. Call me Wang. Your name is Wang Hung? Don't. Oleg approaches. Hey, baby. Want to make another apron stain? The girls drag Oleg away. Earl catches on and plays a romantic tune on the sax as Han and Dr. Hung link arms and walk to the sex toy table. Oh, my. What is all this? Han looks across the diner at Oleg. Oleg gives Han a nod. After hours, diner becomes kinky sex club. I am grand master of domination. Wow, you wild man. I will do anything you say, master. <laughs> Interior, Williamsburg Diner. Later, the final customer exits the diner. Max, Carolyn, and Earl watch Han and Dr. Hung chat flirtatiously. Is it possible that Han is actually charming? It's more possible that she is deaf. Do you have any booze back there? Would I be able to work here if I didn't? Earl heads Max, Max a flask. Max approaches Han and Dr. Hung's table. So I said, that's not even my cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Han, you're so crazy. Hey, lovebirds. Just thought I'd throw some gasoline on the flames of passion. Max pours some alcohol in Han and Dr. Hung's drinks. Max, hop on this starship. Let's make this a Nicki Minaj a trois. <laughs> I love this dirty sense of humor. But you can't talk like that when you meet my parents. Max pokes Han on the table with her knee and glares at him. I don't know if I have the energy to meet parents. Max's sick horse really brings me down. Oh, Angel, you are so caring. Healthy horse would make me very horny. Max and Dr. Hung look at Han questioningly. Uh, I, I mean, make me less stressed and therefore more horny. Uh, horses do not arouse me. Let's drink more. Han pours more alcohol in their glasses. Interior Williamsburg Diner later. Han and Dr. Hung drunkenly grab each other's butts as they head toward the exit. Max and Caroline approach them. You guys look so cute together. Like little Siamese twins joined from the hand to ass. We are heading back to my place, but first, Wang has something to tell you. I come by tomorrow. Fix your sick horse. Oh my god, thank you so much. This is the best news I've heard since I won the Little Miss Billionaire pageant. And right after that, we go look at rings. Dr. Hung and Han make out swabbly. Max, we did it! Chestnut's going to get something pulled out of him, and Dr. Hung's going to get something stuck in her. Exterior, Max and Caroline's backyard day. Max and Caroline lovingly pat Chestnut. He looks so much happier now. You'd be happier too if you just had a pair of clogs removed from your ass. Yes, you do feel better now that you're unclogged. I'm going to go make cupcakes so we can get back to obstructing human battles. Wait, Max. I'm really proud. Me too. Our friend just gave birth to two healthy leather twins. No, Max. I'm proud of 
you... Can you believe how serious Han and Dr. Han are getting? She said they were moving in together. Don't change the subject. You didn't want to be a phone ho, but you did it for me. Calm down. I did it for Chestnut. We love each other, don't we, handsome? Yes, we do. We wish Blondie was out of the picture so you could ride me off into the sunset. I know you love Chestnut, but I know you love me too. Are you sure you want me to love you? My family, we show love by burning each other with cigarettes. Max walks into the apartment. Caroline follows. Interior, Max and Caroline's apartment continuous. Admit it, Max. You do anything for me. You really care. Fine. I love you and care about you, okay? I love and care. Now drop it before I put you in intensive care. The doorbell rings. Caroline and Max walk through the door. This whole experience brought us even closer together. Like hookers on the street watching each other's backs. Keep it up and you are going to be living on the street. Caroline opens the door. Han is there with a bouquet of fresh carrots. Hello, girls. I bring a gift for Chestnut from New Horse Specialty Store. Bronco Bouquets. That's so sweet. Thank you, Han. Come on in. He does. So Wang made horse feel better? He's back to fertilizing the yard like a champ. Oh, thank goodness. I had no idea you cared so much about Chestnut. I don't. Where I come from, horses are just for food. But now that horse is better, I can break it off with crazy vet. I thought you two were hitting it off. She too clean. All this talk about meeting parents, living together, marriage. A true player like me should not be held down by just one hoochie. Pay to a title card over black. It reads current total $927. Paid out. 